Pretty Walk and Talk, episode three. It's a beautiful day today. I think probably the nicest day. Uh, the nicest day that I've been able to record. So it's October. Last few days we're going to have like this out here before it starts getting cold, but I'm honestly looking forward to it. So uh, it's going to be a lot more hoodie walking talks. Uh, as for right now, it's like 70 degrees, but, you know, I keep it on just to keep the blood flow and stay warm. Just my preference. Um, so today I wanted to talk about, uh, you know what? Before I get into that, I just want to touch on something. Today's Hoodie Walk and Talk is actually a little bit more special. Not because of the day, not because of the weather, not because of anything else. Besides the fact that today I'm wearing my own hoodie. The logo's on the back and I will uh, eventually post that up. But um, this is my hoodie. It's a Savory Ape hoodie. Um, you know, a little friends and family situation. First drop kind of deal. But, uh, you know, it's my first time. First time wearing my own clothes. Or at least my own merch. And it uh, makes me very proud. Still got a long ways to go. But, you know, it's just a start. So, anyways. What I want to talk about today is uh, just getting started. You know. Um, you know, this again, maybe for beginners, maybe for intermediate, I think this may still be targeting beginners. So let's get into it. Um, you know, I've come across a lot of people throughout the years who ask various questions, but they all have like a similar route to them. And, uh, you know, these questions go as such, um, uh, What's more important? Is it my diet? Is it my sleep? Is it my training? What's more important? Getting X amount of protein, getting X amount of carbs. Um, what's more important? Is it this split, that split, push, pull, legs, pro split? And uh, I wanna to touch on all this. So first and foremost, you know, I've always heard that People have, you know, people have had different percentages or ratios as to what's more important. You know, diet 60% and training is 40. And um, I just want to say I don't really believe that. And the reason I say that is because nothing works as well without the other. So... Your diet is not meaningless. Of course, it'll keep you healthy, right? Having a good diet is great. But focusing on your diet without focusing on training or thinking that training is less important, it's not really going to get you too far because at the end of the day, again, this is not just overall advice, right? This is advice for people that want to get into lifting, put on some muscle, get stronger. Now... Of course, your amount of protein is going to play a role uh, with, you know, how your muscles recover, the amount of carbs that you have, how they recover. Um, come on, man. So I'm waiting across the street. The dude's taking like 20 minutes. <laughs> so what I was saying is, is that without your training, it doesn't matter what kind of carbs you're having, what kind of protein, you know, what kinds of fats. If you're not training hard, if you're not going to the gym, you're not building that mind-muscle connection, you're not building that level of resistance that you get, you have to keep putting up with um, in order to build that muscle. Um, you're not facing adversity in the gym. You're not really going to grow, Right? Uh, I, I know many people that, you know, would get the diet part down, right? And for me, the diet part was kind of always the hard part because I've always kind of been a fat ass. You know, I love good food and uh, 
I love sitting down, eat with my family, and, you know, um, to me, this is all a lifestyle at the end of the day, so, you know, as important as it is to have, you know, your meal preps and whatnot, I always enjoy just being able to eat home food as much as possible. Now, again, I'm not prepping for a competition. I am not um, uh, a pro bodybuilder that has, you know, shows or or a guest posing um, that I'm booked for or something like that. So uh, I'm just someone who's always loved lifting, been into weightlifting uh, for many years now. And uh, I've helped a lot of my friends, family, uh, colleagues, etc. So uh, I'm trying to just pass this down to you guys, you know, this knowledge that I've gained throughout the years through trial and error and everything. Um, so tangent aside, the first and most important thing is to create that demand, right? Now, of course, you know, one can argue that you're not going to get that mind muscle connection without proper nutrients. Woo, woo, woo. But if you don't already have mind muscle connection, just eat, eat and turn your ass off in the gym. Whether you're eating baked chicken and, you know, um, baked potatoes with some barbecue sauce and yes, barbecue sauce has sugar. Keep doing what you have to do in order for you to keep training hard. That's what I'm trying to get at, right? Um, if whether that's getting a lot of fruits in pre or post lift, um, you know, whether that's having as many carbs as possible, um, whether that's trying to make sure you have as much red meat as possible. I'm a big advocate for red meat. So uh, in other videos, you will see I will always lean more towards red meat than anything else. But, um, you know, if that's what you got to do, then that's what you got to do. Right. The getting the diet part down is great for refining. It's great for uh, taking your goals another step further, etc. But it's another piece of the puzzle that at the end of the day, right, even if, you know, I have friends that have their diet down pat and um, they still not, may not be making the gains that they want to make. And uh, in my opinion, that's heavily because of the lack of adversity that they're facing in the gym or even just knowing how to train or even um, you, it, when you have the recovery part down, right, be it eating, be it sleep, but again, that, that you're not tearing your muscle fibers enough, you're not training hard enough. That diet, that sleep, is recovering what? You see what I'm saying? Uh, and that's something that I would like to get more into. You know, there's a lot of technicalities in this, but at the end of the day, don't overcomplicate it. You know, do what you have to do in order to be able to train hard. And keep doing that until you start building that mind-muscle connection, until you start seeing growth. Um, you're going to have to do different things. You're going to have to experiment. There's things that work for you or work for somebody else that may not for you. You know, um, some people may be great having uh, rice all day long. Maybe too much rice gets you bloated. You know, um, a lot of bodybuilders will advocate for, you know, having pasta and stuff like that and I think that's great those are great tools to you know put some mass on with but at the same time again it may be bloating maybe it messes up your digestion right um there's a lot of people that will say well watch out how many how much fruit you have maybe having tons of fruit for you is is great it gives you good energy and allows you to train really hard and so with the diet aspect I just want to say, uh, you know, diet is not as important in terms of order or ratio and or even more important than your training. If your training is not there, if you don't have that mental toughness, if you don't know how to push through, if you don't know how to do the scary shit, it only matters so much what you're eating, right? And, uh... In terms of uh, 
you know, your splits and whatnot. Honestly, it just goes back to getting started. So, if, for example, you feel like you're not growing enough for the bro split, now I do think that's a great place to start because that way you kind of get to target every single muscle group individually. But, you know, um, let's say you're not connecting well with a bro split or maybe you've tried it for a few months, maybe you've tried it for a year, and uh, you're not seeing the growth that you want to see. Well, thankfully, there's many different splits. And uh, I'm here to say that it honestly doesn't really matter what kind of split you have unless it works for you. Right. So, for example, if you're wondering if you should do push pull legs, but the way you set up push pull legs, say you do three days on one day off or two days on, one day off, but that frequency, you know, of training legs every five days or every six days, maybe, maybe you have some joint issues, right? Maybe you have mobility issues um, and, and it will force you in a way to kind of push past that. But there, you know, there's things that you may need to, to work on in order for you, for you to be able to train legs properly and recover every five or six days be it adjusting volume and whatever, and that's a little bit more advanced. So what I want to say is, is you just got to find, you got to try the different things because that will truly teach you what you connect, uh, uh, what you connect with, right? So if you want to do a push-pull legs and you haven't tried it, I'd say go for it. If you want to, if you've been doing push-pull legs the whole time, you want to try a bro split, go for it. If you want to train back and shoulders one day and then you know chest and arms another day and you want to split your you want to have your split up like that go for it i can promise you you can grow from almost anything again given that you're training hard given that you're still eating to meet the demands of your body but if you got that mind muscle connection you're training hard and you know you're you're having good lifts and you know um, you seem to be making progress. Well, guess what? It's working for you, right? <clears throat> uh, we always get tied up in how we should do things and whether it should be this way or that way or what should be done first or what's more important. Or, To be honest, and this is something that I'm trying to apply to many different areas of my life, what's more important is starting, right? What's more important is taking that first step than the second, than the third. Um, we always try to fix everything at once or try to have everything correct. But the problem with that is, is that it becomes overwhelming, right? It's, it, it's hard to consistently keep doing that as opposed to building up some momentum and then adding a little bit at a time too, right? Let's say you're inconsistent with the gym. Well, your first step is getting in there once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Okay. Now you're at three times a week. Um, you know, your, your, your diet's trash. Well, maybe you start having 50 more grams of protein a day. Nothing else, right? Or maybe 50 more car grams, of, grams of carbs. Or those carbs that you are having, you take half the carbs that you were having before and turn it into better carbs. Maybe the carbs you were having was trash, right? Different random sweets and stuff like that. You turn half of that and turn it into meaningful, purposeful carbs. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh white rice, basmati, jasmine, right? Whatever it may be. Um, but honestly, it's it, it's all about just getting started and it's all about keeping it moving at the end of the day. Um, I'm going to end the video here this time. Appreciate you all for tuning in. I am out. This is Sabriega.